Welcome to Active Boards in Two. Podcast topic on the fly questions, general basics, and question types. Now that you have your active expressions all set up for student use, let's start collecting some responses. Active expression question types can be split up into three categories on the fly, which we're going to cover here, teacher directed, and self paced. This is the first podcast of two that will take you through basic management and on the fly questioning. Level one on the fly questioning works with the express poll, which can be found on your dashboard, on your main toolbox, or in the tools menu. The express poll allows you to ask all of the available question types. You can do this with little prior preparation and within Active Inspire or other programs. Click on the desktop tools icon in your main toolbox. This minimizes your flip chart and allows you to access the express poll in your desktop tool pod. You can utilize this to ask questions in your internet browser or other digital programs. Click here to return to your flip chart where your data is stored. Most likely you're going to access your express poll from the main toolbox. And here it is. Click in the center to move it around anywhere on the screen to help you avoid covering your content. As you can see here, there are six types of questions. The first type of question is multiple choice. Hover over it to make your selections. Select up to six responses, A through F. In addition, you can choose to have the student select multiple responses. The next type is sort and order. Choose from six options to allow the students to sort your content in any particular order of your choosing. The Express Poll also features a yes, no, yes, no, don't know, true, false, true, false, don't know option. On to the Likert scale. You can choose from a variety of available scales, confidence, agreement, or generic scales where you can fill in the details. The last two are the free response options. The numeric option only includes numbers. The text option includes numbers, letters, symbols. Once you're ready to ask a question, move your express poll to a convenient location on your screen and launch your vote. When your vote is active, you get additional windows. First, you will notice your device window, which can be moved and resized anywhere on your screen. Then you'll notice your vote controller window, which you can move anywhere on your screen as well. In your student device window, you can click on any of the named devices and turn them off. This is great for students that are absent or sometimes as a management tool for students that are not responding appropriately. The voting controller window allows you to set a time limit for when the vote will close or manually stop the vote. If the vote closes before all of the active devices have issued a response, you will have the option of allowing them to retry or not. Once a vote closes, you will get a voting results window. Details about managing the results window is the topic of another podcast in this series. Let's start another vote. I'm going to choose a multiple choice question. I'm going to turn off another device so that the number of active devices matches the number of students I expect to respond. Once all of the students have responded, the vote will automatically close and pop up my results window. I can immediately see the results of the student responses and have a conversation about the content with my students or adjust the instruction. One thing that you will notice with on-the-fly questioning is that whenever you ask a question, it will put a screen capture of the content when you ask the question at the end of your flip chart. This is great for reviewing where you were and possibly what you were asking. Remember, all results are stored in the voting browser. More on this later. This has been Active Boards in 2. I'm Mike Martindale.